What we're going to be looking at here is an example of a non-monetary exchange of some property, plant, and equipment, and that deals with long-term assets. And our example is going to be where a company trades in an old machine here for a new machine, and they're also going to receive cash here on this trade-in. Now, when we're dealing with these non-monetary exchanges here of assets, we have specific rules that we have to follow here. And just looking in our case, first case here, uh, first step here, we have to compute any a gain or loss here on the asset given up. And that's simply the fair value of the asset less its book value equals any gain or loss. In our example here is where we're going to be looking specifically at a gain here. And then we're going to be looking at the case here where there's no commercial substance in this uh, uh, exchange here. That is, it doesn't affect any future cash flows. And with the no commercial substance here, we're also going to have the case here where some cash is going to be received and because of that, a portion of the gain has to be recognized. So we're going to have a gain here on this transaction, and a portion is going to have to be recognized. And that's based on our simple equation here, where you have the cash received, which is commonly referred to as the boot. And then you take the sum amount here of the cash received, plus the fair value of the other assets received, and divide that sum total into the cash received. And that's going to be our fractional amount here that we have to take times the total gain here to determine the portion of the gain that has to be recognized. So let's go up and look at our example here. Now this is where Corporation A purchased a new machine by trading in its old machine and they're going to receive this new machine plus they're going to receive some cash here in, on that exchange. And the following relates to this purchase here. So we have the cash received on the exchange and it's going to be $20,000 here. Now remember that's the cash received here. Now we have the cost of the old machine and we're not going to go through all the numbers here but just go look at the items here and how we do our calculations. So we have the cost of the old machine less the accumulated depreciation depreciation here on the old machine gives us the book value of the old machine at $120,000. Now the other thing is somehow we have to, and we're going to be given this in our example here the fair value of the old machine and the fair value of the new machine but somehow you have to come up with their fair value here. So uh, just looking at the fair value of the old machine $200,000 and its book value here is uh, 120 so you can see that we a fair value is greater than the book value so there's going to be gain here in this exchange here and then a fair value of the new machine that was given here at $180,000. So the first thing we have to do is we have to calculate the dis gain here on this disposal on this exchange. So this is how we do it. We take the fair value of the old machine here. That's $200,000. That was what was given up here. Less the book value of the old machine. And that we calculated out to be $120,000 here. And the difference here gives us the, t in this case, it's going to be a total gain on the disposal here. The difference gives us $80,000. So that's our total gain here that we're going to be looking at. And, and uh, just going again here, because this exchange lacks commercial substance and some cash is received, a portion of the gain has to be realized. So again, we go back to our equation here, our fractional amount cash received, that is our boot here, and divide it by the sum total of the cash received plus the fair value of the other assets times our total gain equals that portion of the gain that we calculated up here that has to be recognized. So we had the total gain here of $80,000 but and we received some cash in this deal so we have to determine the portion of gain that has to be recognized. So let's go look at how we do that here. The cash received that was $20,000 here and then we would divide it by the sum total here of the cash received of 20000 plus the fair value of the other assets received. And the fair value of that new machine that we're receiving here is $180,000. So taking that sum total into our cash received here. Uh, we're going to come up with the fractional amount here and then we take it times the total gain here that for that we calculated. $80,000 was our total gain. So the fractional amount or the portion of the gain that is going to be realized that we have to realize here would be $8,000 here. That fractional amount times our total gain here uh, equals $8,000. So now let's go and look at how we would um, record this here. So the first thing uh, we have, we are going to have to defer the remaining gain here and reduce the basis of the new machine. So uh, remember, we have the portion that we have to recognize here uh, of $8,000 now. And we have the total amount here of $80,000. 
of our gain that we have. So we have a deferred gain here, simply the difference, the 80,000 less the uh, 8,000 portion that we're rec realizing here gives us a deferred gain here of $72,000. So now uh, for a basis for our new machine here. So we take the fair value of the new machine. That was $180,000 here. Less the gain that's deferred here, $72,000. That's our deferred gain here. Uh, gives us the basis of the new machine here of $108,000. Or we can do it in this fashion here. Again, for the basis of our new machine, we take the book value of our old machine here at $120,000, and then we subtract out the portion of the book value presumed to be sold here. So just remember that the book value of the of the portion that's presumed to be sold that's with twelve thousand dollars. So let's go and, and well, we take that here from the book value of the old machine plus the portion uh, presumed to be sold gives us a basis of a new machine here of one hundred and eight thousand dollars. And those are comparable amounts here. You can see we, cal in either case, we come up with the basis of a new machine at $108,000. But let's go look at how this portion of the book value presumed to be sold, how we calculated that. Again, we're going back to the same equation that we had up here. Our cash received plus the cash received here plus the fair value of the other assets. And what we're going to do is we're going to use that here to de uh, determine the uh, portion of the book value here presumed to be sold. So we take that fractional amount here, cash received plus the cash received plus the fair value of that um, new machine re receiving here and, and making our fractional amount here, making our division. Uh, we take that times the book value of the old machine. The book value of the old machine is $120,000. So th that fractional amount here times the book value of the old machine gives us the book value of the amount that's presumed to be sold here at $12,000. All right, so going just looking at that again here, we calculated the basis of the new machine here because that's what we're going to be using for recording this this asset here, and that ink and this this basis here of the new machine was reduced uh, because of this deferred gain. We had to reduce it here because of the deferred gain. Now let's go and look at our calc our journal entry here. So a portion of the gain would be realized here. So we take our cash received, that was the $20,000 here, and this was the new machine. We'd record the new machine here at $108,000 because that's why we, we had to include that deferred gain here uh, when we're recording our new machine. So we would record it here at 100 or debit it here at $108,000 and then we'd be, be removing here the old machine off our books. So we would uh, be debiting or getting rid of our accumulated depreciation here on the old machine here. And then this is where we recognize our gain on the disposal. Now remember that's the portion of the gain that we realized here of $8,000. And then uh, we'd be removing the old machine off the books here at $220,000. All right. So that takes care of our example here and let's just go back here and look at it again one more time here and that's just where the exchange lacks commercial substance but because some cash is received a portion of the gain has to be realized. So these are our equations here and that's how we uh, determine our portion of the gain that has to be realized.